tonight on News 30, we visit with Senator Lankford about the continual threat of ISIS and conversation continues on Oklahoma's decision to remove AP history classes. Welcome to News 30, I'm Lindsay Skinner. We sat down with Senator James Lankford this week to discuss the ongoing threat of ISIS and how the U.S. plans on addressing it. Senator Lankford had just traveled to the Middle East last month and saw firsthand the terror ISIS and other extremist groups are causing. Yeah, it's, it's a very intense environment, obviously. Uh, it's very complicated. You know, we, we get bits and pieces in American media when ISIS releases a video, we, we get very little information about uh, any of the involvement, what's really happening in the Middle East, what Jordan is doing, what the Saudis are doing, what the, the engagement of that, that happens. Uh, so that's, that's difficult to assess unless you're actually there. Many Americans are calling for war with ISIS, and Senator Lankford is recognizing the vast majority is wanting to take action. He recently took a poll at an Oklahoma town meeting where 95% in attendance thought America is not doing enough. I was legitimately surprised that such a high number of people said we need to be more engaged in this, not less. And there's a tremendous distrust for the president and his policies because no one can figure out what the president's trying to accomplish. We seem to be trying to fight a war accidentally, uh, not intentionally. ISIS has been growing more aggressive as they continue to gain territory in the Middle East. The terrorist group is known to use social media to recruit extremists worldwide, but people are fighting back. Hashtags like hashtag 21 martyrs are honoring the 21 Egyptian men killed last week and sending a message to ISIS that it will not be tolerated. Senator Lankford discussed the inevitable war and calls on the president to accept the responsibility as commander in chief. The United States is capable of taking this enemy on. Our decision is do we have the will to do it, do we have the strategy to take that on. The President of the United States is responsible for military strategy. According to our Constitution, he is the Commander-in-Chief. You can't run a military operation from Congress or from the judiciary. It has to be run from the executive branch. We've seen that in Vietnam, we've seen that in other places uh, where you've got lots of folks second-guessing all the time. So it's right that we get the strategy right. The President has to be able to execute this war correctly because lives are on the line. Repub Republican State Representative John Bennett of Salisaw recently authored House Bill 1324, allowing Oklahomans with a license to be able to carry handguns into the state capitol without going through security checkpoints. Bennett said, quote, There's always a level of what if out there, but until they do something illegal that would take away the right to be licensed, they should be able to carry, end quote. The bill has been assigned to the Oklahoma House Public Safety Committee. A date for the hearing has not yet been scheduled. Discussion about the drop of AP history classes in Oklahoma continues. Reagan McGowan has more. Last week, Representative Danny Fisher proposed a bill that would cut school funding for the Advanced Placement U.S. History class. This U.S. History class and other Advanced Placement courses and tests were developed by the College Board to assist high school students in earning college credit. I asked history professor Carol Humphrey how this advanced placement class helps prepare students for her college courses. They come in with a good knowledge of, of American history, which is useful, but they also come in with knowledge about how to think and d discuss issues and write good essay answers, and so they just gain a lot of skills through the class. If you would like to join in petitioning against this bill, visit change.org for more information. I'm Reagan McGowan, reporting. Capitol Hill has been in heavy debate this week over a bill to fund the Department of Homeland Security. Voting on this bill would fund DHS until September, but the issue is whether or not it's tied to a bill that is being presented to stop President Obama's executive order on immigration. 
Wednesday after several attempts, the bill cleared its first hurdle to move forward on the funding measure. There is no indicator how this bill will be received and changed before the deadline on Friday at midnight. If a decision is not made and funding isn't provided, all America would feel the hit in some way, though not immediately. Two places this will be seen are for DHS employees who will either be furloughed or required to work without pay during the shutdown and local fire departments and law enforcement who may lose staff that were funded by DHS, slowing response time. Despite the shutdown and lack of funding for DHS employees, the shutdown will not hinder Obama's executive action on delaying deportation for immigrants. This weekend, Oklahoma Baptist University will host a training session for the Oklahoma Disaster Relief. The training covers topics ranging from childcare to recovery debris removal. It will take place at Bailey Business Building from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the cost is $5 per person. The event is open to any member of a Southern Baptist Church. For more information, you can go to bgco.org. Oklahoma Baptist University Police addresses harassment issues and assures the campus safety with reporter Nicole Smith next. Saturday, February 28th at 7.30 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. is the annual Kids Day at the University of Oklahoma's College of Dentistry. Though parents may enjoy this a little more than their kids will, the dentistry will offer free dental care for kids ages 4 to 12. To register your little one, you can call 405-607-4755. News 30 spoke with Pastor Fred Luter of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, who speaks for the Southern Baptist Convention's origins and how the denomination has changed since its beginnings. Uh, Northern whites wanted to get rid of their slaves that Southern whites didn't want to, and so there was a split in the convention, and the uh, Southern African Convention was born as a result uh, of that a great, great, great grandson of a slave uh, is now president of the, of the largest Protestant denomination in the country. It OBU celebrated Black History Month with a luncheon celebrating the history of school as it overcame diversity. Tyler Henson has more. In celebration of Black History Month, I had the opportunity this week to sit down with three of Shawnee's African American pastors and ask them some questions about diversity in today's culture. Pastors Taryn Gaddis, Arthur Rainey, and Mike Woodbury had a lot to say about the changes they've seen in our community as well as in America as a whole. Yeah, for me, I've just been seeing a shift, uh, just not only in Oklahoma, but just in the nation, uh, uh, as far as diversity when it comes to uh, fellowship uh, between different cultures. And so um, uh, just within the past three years, just being a pastor, I've seen a difference uh, just in our community. One of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm excited about is that we do have, most of the African American churches in the community in which uh, we live and pastor are exclusively or at least predominantly African American. Mm -hmm. And now uh, we have members that are not African American. We have, we have members that are Middle Eastern. <laughs> Pastor Gaddis ended our interview by calling to all people to stand up for diversity. And any, any great movement starts with all people. Uh, I know during Black History Month, we always talk about the great African-American heroes and sheroes of, of history. But you and I both understand that it takes all people in order for that to happen. Uh, those things that happen in Selma and those things that happen down south and those sit-ins and those marches, they were just not just African-American people. They were all That's people. Right. OBU is a very safe campus, but all students should be very aware of their safety. Nicole Smith has more. Lately, there have been reports of some female students being harassed by unknown males near the West University apartments. While none of the cases appeared to be serious, the resident director of the West U apartments sent out an email to those residents reminding them to be cautious and to use the buddy system when walking around at night. 
Last week, I spoke with David Shannon, chief of the campus police department, about the incidents. It didn't happen anywhere. Uh, it's been limited uh, occurring here on OBU. Uh, we uh, had a couple of incidents reported this last week that uh, were reported to us after the fact. We had one that occurred at the walk, and we found out about 10 to 15 minutes after it occurred. The week before, two other incidents were reported, one at Kerr in the morning and another at the Geiger Center later that evening. Shannon said that both cases were reported about two to six hours after they happened. Uh, we were able to watch uh, recorded surveillance cameras, uh, located the sus suspects that were described, but at this time they have not been identified. They appear to be non-students. While Chief Shannon assures students that OBU is really a safe campus and these types of incidents do not occur often here, he still advises students to be smart. Be aware of your surroundings for one. If you're walking by yourself uh, on campus, let somebody know where you're going, what time you're going to be back. Uh, if you see something suspicious, you know, if you come out of a, a well-populated area, go back to that area. Don't walk to where you're going. Don't let somebody follow you to, you know, where you live on campus. I'm Nicole Smith, reporting for News 30. 30 would like to thank the Campus Police Department for all the work they do to keep OBU safe. Remember, if you see anything suspicious, call Campus Security immediately. The number is 405-878-600. The Mars One Foundation, a company that's trying to put human colonies on Mars, has chosen 100 people from a pool of applicants for the chance to become the first Mars colonists. When Mars One originally released applications, they received over 200,000 responses from all over the world. The lucky 100 that made the first cut will take part in teamwork exercises and be evaluated by scientists. Only four will be chosen to make the 300 million mile journey to Mars. After eight years of training in simulated environments, the Foundation's first manned flight to Mars isn't actually set to launch until 2024. Until then, the Mars One Foundation plans to eventually televise their progress on their own TV station. For more info about the Foundation or to see the profiles of the Mars 100, visit www.mars1.com. After some snowfall earlier in the week, there's potential to see more. Tiami Cortez has your weather next. Man, it sure was cold on Monday. Then we saw some sunshine on Wednesday. Here's Tiami Cortez with our outlook for the rest of the week. Thank you, Lindsay. This has been a very chilly week for all of us. We encountered extremely low temperatures, especially on Monday night with the result of snow. On Tuesday, the snow and ice started melting as we reached higher temperatures and roads, schools, and workplaces resumed their normal routine. Yesterday, we made it all the way up to 57 degrees. Today, here in Shawnee, we have seen some partly cloudy skies with temperatures around the highs of 30 and some very high winds, making it feel about 27 degrees. Right now, the temperature is about 30 degrees, although the winds are making it feel like it is 23 degrees. We topped out at 36 degrees today, which is 16 degrees below normal for this time of year. Across the state, we've seen temperatures ranging from the upper 20s to lower 40s. Oklahoma City made it up to 35 degrees, while Elk City saw temperatures making it up to 40 degrees. Later on tonight, the temperatures are going to drop down into the upper teens and low 20s. Shawnee should make it down to about 21, with the surrounding areas making it down to about 17 or 18 degrees. Tomorrow, the temperatures are going to stay roughly around the same, starting out at 22 degrees in the morning, with a 50% chance of snow in the afternoon. Then, we should make it up to about 30 degrees and dropping it to 27 degrees with light winds for Friday night. Then on Saturday, the temperatures will rise just a little bit at 37 degrees with a low of 31 degrees and 60% chance of rain or snow showers. The weekend will end with continuous increasing temperatures at 49 degrees with a low of 32 and 50% chance of showers. Then on Monday, we'll continue to see temperatures rising with a high of 55 degrees and a low of 47 degrees with cloudy skies. Temperatures will rise to a high of 65 degrees on Tuesday with a low of 36 degrees 
with a 50% chance of morning showers. Then on Wednesday, we will see a drastic drop of temperatures with partly cloudy skies and a slim possibility of rain with a high of 43 degrees and a low of 25 degrees. I hope you all stay tuned for next week's weather forecast. The temperatures will continue to rise through the week. Stay warm and bundle up. That's all for weather. Here's Regan McGowan with Arts and Entertainment. I'm Regan McGowan for Arts and Entertainment this week. This weekend, OBU will be hosting a gospel music service in honor of Black History Month. This service, featuring gospel choirs from local Baptist churches, will be held Friday, February 27th in Rayleigh Chapel's Yarbrough Auditorium at 7.30 p.m. Also this Friday, Will Smith and Margaret Robbie's new movie, Focus, hits theaters. This rated R drama tells the tale of a romance gone wrong between Nikki, an established con artist, and Jess, the talented newcomer he takes under his wing. Join in on the scheme this weekend at one of our local theaters. If you're more in the mood for literature, the Bean and Berry and Shawnee Mall will be hosting Coffee with the Author this Saturday from 12.30 to 2, giving you a great chance to come and meet with some of our local authors. That's all for Arts and Entertainment. I'm Reagan McGowan. Sooner shine at the NFL Combine. Laura Hickman with your sports next. Here's Laura Hickman with your sports next. The OKC Thunder's star Kevin Durant underwent surgery on Sunday to alleviate pain in his right foot. The surgery was intended to replace a screw that Durant had put in his foot in an initial surgery on October 16th. Durant will be evaluated next week to determine when he can get back to playing, but he's expected to return very soon so that he can finish out the season with the Thunder. Three former football players from the University of Oklahoma traveled to Indianapolis to show off their skills in the NFL Combine this week. Tight end Blake Bell was the first from OU to participate. His 40-yard dash and shuttle times placed in the top five, but his bench press results were very weak. He had a private meeting with the Pittsburgh Steelers afterwards, and according to his dad, the meeting went very well. Defensive tackle Jordan Phillips was also a part of the Combine. He finished with a 40-yard dash time of 5.19 seconds, which was actually really good time for a player of his size. Offensive guard Adam Shedd had a time of 5.74 seconds. Even though he recorded one of the slowest times, he has still generated interest from a few teams. The OBU men's basketball team snapped a five-game losing streak on Saturday with a 92-66 win over Texas Wesleyan University. The Bison forced 18 turnovers, including nine steals by Ty Allen. Allen was OBU's highest scorer with 32 points. He added six assists as well. The Bison shot 55% from the field and led by as many as 29 points at one time. The 18 and 10 Bison will head down to Texas to play at Wayland Baptist on Thursday. That's all for sports. Lindsay, back to you. You may never have the chance to visit the moon, but what about owning a part of its history? Over 600 vintage NASA photos are up for auction, including pictures from that astronaut Buzz Aldrin took on a spacewalk and the shot astronaut Neil Armstrong snapped on the moon. Prices for these historic space photos will be anywhere from $460 to over $15,000 at the Bloomsbury Auction in London. That's all for News 30 this week. Remember to be watching out for our social media. The interviews on tonight's show will be uploaded to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Shawnee News 30. You can also watch previous shows on YouTube as well. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a good one.